All right, let's dive into the world of Borophene. This stuff is making waves. It's like, you know, graphene, but potentially even more impactful. It really is. There's a real buzz around it. Yeah. You've been digging through a ton of research on this, right? So mm -hmm. let's break it all down for everyone today. By the end of this deep dive, we'll all be able to explain Borophene, understand why scientists are so excited, and see how it could actually, you know, change things. Sounds like a plan. All right, so first things first, what exactly is Borophene? Well, like graphene, you've got a single layer of atoms, super thin, but the difference here is Borophene is made of boron, not carbon. Okay, so that's the big difference. Yeah, and that one change makes a huge difference in how it behaves. So it's all about the building block. Exactly. So carbon in graphene makes these like perfect hexagons, very predictable, but boron, it's a bit more um, unpredictable. It forms these unique hollow hexagons that can actually vary. We call them HHs. HHs, okay. So how do these HHs affect borophene, like in practice? Well, they give it incredible flexibility and strength, even more than graphene. It's kind of like mm. graphene is like a sheet of paper, strong, but you bend it too far, it'll tear. Right. Borophene with those HHs, it's more like a woven fabric. It can bend and flex without losing its strength. Okay, so are we talking foldable phones that can actually last? Yeah. Because that's been the dream for a while now, right? Definitely a possibility. And it's not just flexible, it's a fantastic conductor too, both electricity and heat. So faster electronics, better thermal management, all that. Precisely. And here's where it gets even more interesting. Borophene is super reactive chemically. You can attach different molecules to its surface and actually fine tune it. Oh, wow. So it's customizable. In a way, yes. And that yeah. makes it incredibly versatile. We could be talking about, you know, next gen batteries, super sensitive sensors, even advancements in hydrogen storage and uh, superconductivity. Oh, superconductivity. Now that's just like sci-fi stuff. Yeah, it is pretty mind-blowing. It means zero resistance when conducting electricity. So think about like perfectly efficient energy transmission, crazy fast computers. So you're saying borophene could be the key to a future where we basically eliminate energy loss. It's one of the most exciting possibilities for sure, but it's early days still. Right, of course. There are always challenges with, you know, cutting edge science. So what are we up against with borophene? Well, Producing it on a large scale is still pretty tricky and expensive. It's not like graphene, which is relatively easy to make. So it's a bit of a um, rare commodity right now. Yeah, good analogy. And that reactivity, while helpful for tuning it, also means it's prone to uh, degrading. It can react with air and moisture, which makes it tricky to work with long term. So it's a delicate balance, trying to harness its power. Exactly. But scientists are making progress, you know? They're exploring new production techniques, ways to protect it from damage. So there's optimism in the field. Absolutely. The potential payoff is just too big to ignore, and every day we're getting closer to understanding its full capabilities. Okay, now I'm really interested to hear about some of those specific applications. Let's start with maybe the most impactful one, borophene and energy. What about its potential for, you know, batteries and supercapacitors. This is where it gets really interesting. So lithium ion batteries, the ones we use now, they have limits in how much energy they can hold. But borophene, thanks to its structure, those HHs, it can store way more lithium ions compared to the graphite anodes in regular batteries. Okay, so longer lasting phones, electric cars that can go further. Right, and it's not just capacity. Borophene could also charge things way faster because of how quickly it moves those lithium ions around. Now that would be a game changer. No more charging anxiety. Yeah, it's a compelling idea. And beyond batteries, they're supercapacitors. They charge and discharge really fast, but they don't usually hold as much energy. Borophene could change that. So best of both worlds, fast charging and high capacity. Exactly. Imagine electric cars charging in minutes or grid scale storage that can handle all that renewable energy like solar and wind. Huge implications for a sustainable energy future. Mm. What about hydrogen storage? You mentioned that earlier. How does borophene fit in there? Hydrogen is a great fuel source, clean and energy dense, but the problem has always been storing and transporting it safely. Borphine's structure lets it bind to hydrogen really effectively, so we could potentially store way more hydrogen than we can now. So borophene could be the key to actually making hydrogen power viable. It's a promising area of research, that's for sure. Imagine a world powered by hydrogen fuel cells, all thanks to borophene. That's a future I'd love to see. Okay. Let's shift gears a bit. Let's yeah. talk about electronics. What are the possibilities there? Well, like we said, its flexibility is huge for electronics. Imagine, you know, truly durable, foldable phones, wearables that actually blend with your body, flexible circuits for medical implants. 
the possibilities are pretty endless. So we're finally moving past rigid, breakable devices. It's a revolution in flexible electronics. Exactly. And because it conducts so well, these devices could be super fast and efficient too. Think processors that run at lightning speed without overheating or super thin displays that are both bright and energy efficient. That's a big jump from where we are now. Yeah. And it all comes down to the unique properties of this incredible material. This is all fascinating, but I think we need to pause here for now. Mm -hmm. There's still so much more to unpack about this incredible material. There is. We've barely scratched the surface of what borophene can do. Welcome back to our deep dive on borophene. We're going to keep exploring this amazing material. Yeah, last time we covered like its incredible properties and how those could lead to you know better batteries, electronics, all that. It's kind of hard to grasp how one material can do so much. It's true. It is remarkable. Yeah. And a lot of that comes down to its atomic structure, which we talked about earlier. Those HHs, the variable hollow hexagons, they're really the key, right? They give it that strength and flexibility even more than graphene. But you also said those HHs make it like really reactive chemically. So how does that play out in the real world? Well, one of the most exciting areas is sensor technology. Imagine a sensor so sensitive it can detect a single molecule. Wow, that's hard to even imagine. Yeah, borophene could actually make that happen. That's what makes it so good at detecting things. It's a few things. The large surface area, the atomic structure, and that reactivity we talked about. It can bind to specific molecules, like really selectively, and we can measure those interactions electronically. So it's like a... um. A molecular detective with a built-in alarm system. Exactly. And that opens up so many possibilities. We could have medical tests that detect diseases super early, environmental monitors that track pollution really precisely, even food sensors that find the contaminants right away. That's incredible. Early disease detection, real-time food safety. Borphine is starting to sound like a superhero. It really does have the potential to change things. And it doesn't stop there. Let's talk about water purification. Okay, now I'm really curious. How can something so thin, just one atom thick, actually purify water? It's about making really, really efficient filtration membranes. Imagine a membrane with pores so tiny they can filter out salt and other impurities, leaving just clean water. So like a molecular sieve. Exactly. And because borophene is so thin and light, these membranes could be way more energy efficient than the desalination methods we use now clean water for more people. That's a really inspiring application. It sounds like borophene could help us tackle some of our biggest challenges. It could. But remember, we talked about some futuristic possibilities, too, things that sound like sci-fi. Yeah, you mentioned nanomedicine. What exactly does that mean? Well, it's basically using really, really tiny machines, smaller than a cell, to do things like deliver drugs directly to where they're needed, repair tissues, even fight infections at the cellular level. Wait, are we talking about microscopic robots inside our bodies? In a way, yeah. And borphine, with its strength, flexibility, and how we can tune it, it's a perfect material to build these tiny machines. Wow, that's mind-blowing. What would that mean for healthcare? The possibilities are huge. Imagine targeted drug delivery with fewer side effects, nanosensors that diagnose diseases early, even nanobots that repair tissues or regrow organs. That sounds straight out of Star Trek. Is this really achievable or is it like centuries away? We're not quite there yet, but nanomedicine is moving fast and borophene is one of the materials pushing it forward. It's amazing that a material discovered so recently could have such a huge impact on medicine. But I know there are challenges too. What are some of the hurdles with borophene? You're right. One of the biggest is still producing it on a large scale. The current methods are complex and expensive, so it's not easy to make a lot of it. So it's like Trying to grow a rare flower. That's a good way to put it. Exactly. And then there's the stability issue. It's reactive, which is good for tuning it, but it also means it can degrade easily. Air and moisture can cause problems. So it's a constant battle to keep this wonder material from falling apart. In a way, yes. But scientists are working on it. They're exploring new ways to produce it, like chemical vapor deposition and liquid phase exfoliation. Those could make it easier and cheaper to make more. So there's hope for making borophene more readily available. Definitely. And they're also working on the stability problem, trying things like encapsulating it in protective layers or chemically modifying it to make it more resistant. Like giving those delicate structures a suit of armor. Exactly. And as research goes on, I think we'll see even more creative solutions. That'll pave the way for using borophene in all sorts of fields. It's amazing how scientists are pushing the boundaries of what's possible. But what about the bigger picture? How could borphine change the world beyond just the specific things we've talked about? 
That's a great question. I think borophene could really change how we think about and design materials in general. It shows us that nature is full of surprises and we still have so much to learn. It's versatility, it's potential, it's inspiring people to think outside the box. So it's not just about the technology, but about a whole new way of approaching material science. Yeah, exactly. Borophene is challenging our assumptions and pushing us to explore new frontiers. That's exciting. It sounds like borophene is more than just a material. It's a catalyst for innovation in all sorts of fields. I agree. And as research continues and we figure out how to produce more of it, its impact will be felt everywhere. It could change industries, create jobs, even change how we understand the world around us. This has been an amazing journey so far. Yeah. And I feel like we've only just scratched the surface. There's still so much more to discover. In the next part of our deep dive, we'll look at some of the most cutting edge research, like its potential for quantum computing and plasmonics. I can't wait. This is the kind of deep dive that really opens your mind. Welcome back to our final deep dive into borophene. It's been amazing exploring this material. It really has. We've covered so much. Its properties, its potential uses in energy, electronics, sensing, even nanomedicine. I know, right? <laughs> Every time I think it can't get any more mind-blowing, we find something else. So for this last part, let's go all out. What's some of the most like futuristic research on borophene that you're excited about? Well, one area that's really fascinating is its potential in quantum computing. Borophene's electronic structure, especially when you combine it with other materials, could be used to create these things called quibits. Okay, hold on. For those of us who aren't, you know, quantum physicists, what are quibits and why are they important? So think of qubits like the building blocks of quantum computers. Regular computers use bits, which are either zero or one, right? Right. Qubits are different. They can be both zero and one at the same time. It's called superposition. Okay, that's a little hard to wrap my head around. It is, yeah. But the point is, this lets quantum computers do calculations in a completely different way. They can solve problems that would take regular computers, even the most powerful ones, like forever. So we're talking about a whole new level of computing power. Exactly. And borophene, with its unique electronic properties and how we can tune it, it could be crucial for actually building this technology. Imagine designing new drugs and materials with incredible precision, simulating complex systems, even breaking the codes that protect our data. That's a lot to take in. Uh. Sounds like borophene could lead to some major breakthroughs. It really could. And there's another interesting area called plasmonics. It's basically about manipulating light at really, really tiny scales. Okay, I'm going to need you to explain that one a little bit. Sure. So borophene can support these things called surface plasmons. They're basically waves of electrons that travel along the surface of the material. Okay, I'm trying to picture that. It's hard to visualize, <laughs> yeah. But the cool thing is they can interact with light in really interesting ways. We can use them to control light at incredibly small scales. So... Like, what kind of applications are we talking about? Well, think about things like super sensitive sensors, really high resolution imaging, maybe even optical computing where we use light instead of electricity to do calculations. Wow, that's amazing. So we could control light in ways we never could before. Exactly. And borophene, with all its unique properties, is becoming a really powerful tool in this field. It's opening up all these new possibilities for manipulating light and using its energy. It could lead to some major technological advances. It's incredible to think about all the possibilities. From quantum computing to plasmonics, borophene is pushing the boundaries of science in so many ways. It really is. And the most exciting part is we're just getting started. There's so much more to discover about this material. It feels like we're witnessing the birth of a new era in material science. And borophene is leading the way. But before we wrap up, I want to go back to something you said earlier about the broader impact of borophene. How do you see it shaping the world beyond the specific technologies? I think it's a fundamental change in how we think about and design materials. It reminds us that nature is full of surprises and there's always something new to learn. Borophene's versatility, its potential, it's inspiring researchers to really push the limits, to think differently. So it's not just about the technology itself, but about a whole new way of thinking about materials. Exactly. It's about challenging our assumptions and being open to the unknown. Well said. This deep dive has been incredibly inspiring. It makes me feel really optimistic about the future. With materials like borophene, it seems like the possibilities are endless. I agree. And for everyone listening, stay curious, keep learning, and never stop exploring. That's great advice. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up our deep dive into the amazing world of borophene. It's been a pleasure exploring this with you. The pleasure was mine.
And to all our listeners, keep an eye on Borophine. It's going to change the world in some pretty incredible ways. Until next time, keep diving deep.